everyone, James Mansfield here bringing you yet another video. Oh my god, you guys, it's time for yet another Drag Race wig recreation. Yes, and today we are doing Yuhua Hamasaki. Yes, a friend of the channel and our very own queen of the bootleg. The bootleg queen herself. Yuhua, yes. <laughs> She's just full of bootleg opinions. I adore Yuhua and I adored this hairstyle. And it actually has a little bit of a sentimental attachment for me because, well, I was there when she wore it. <laughs> We're, of course, doing her entrance look on RuPaul's Drag Race Season 10. She has a gorgeous, like, pulled back lace front wig with a big attachment in the back, a topper. So that's what we're going to do today. Oh my goodness, let's get started. Now, I have here a message from Yuhua explaining the inspiration for this hair and the legacy of it. Let's take a look. Oh, love this hair. I've actually had this hair for several years before debuting it onto Drag Race. And yes, debuting, because getting onto Drag Race is just that important. F the local girls. Just kidding. Hashtag supports local queen. By the way, this is Yuhua Hasaki, if you haven't recognized from my voice yet. But this is what we like to call a topper. What that is, it's a wig that I pin onto my real hair, or another wig to give it the shape that it does. This was a three-way hand-me-down, so I bought it from another queen, who bought it from another queen, and I got it for $75 back in 2000 and I believe 13-ish. But yeah, I'm a queen that likes to wear things until it falls apart. If you haven't recognized from my photos, videos, yeah, I like to wear a lot of things repetitively until it falls apart because I care about the environment. Now, I wear this hair because I have a lot of actual bio hair underneath. So I will wear like a lace front, literally the front piece, and I blend it into my real hair, tie into a bun, and pin this topper on. Now, I have also a lot of real hair so that this topper doesn't cover a lot of my bio hair. So I hide the back with flowers, ornaments, a bunch of shenanigans to blend that whole thing together. But anyways, back to James. Oh, I also have a fun fact. Now, during filming, Blair asked me a question when we were all sitting outside the studio. She asked me, is this really your hair? And I jokingly said to her, yeah, it's my real hair. But I guess like she's from Indianapolis. Indianapolis, how do you say it? Indianapolis, that she doesn't know that I was joking. <laughs> so she took it like literally that she thought it was my real hair, like the lace front part, not the topper part, but like she thought the front was like my real hair. But anyway, that's a fun story from behind the scenes. Wow. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Here we go. Now I have here a lace front wig. This is the Femme Fatale in black, available at jamesmansfieldbeauty.com. Yes, now this is a gorgeous lace front wig. And as you will explained in her commentary, it's actually her real hair paired with a lace front, like a frontal, like she has a separate frontal that she would glue on. And she actually gave me one of those frontals and like a bundle of wigs that she donated to me years ago, which are somewhere in my house probably still. But she gave me a couple of frontals that she used to use for her hairstyle because her hair is so long, she would just put the phony baloney hairline on it. Like, that's so smart. I'd say like, I never known anyone to do that. And when she explained that, I was like, that is actually brilliant. Cause then you don't have to really worry about like too much damage happening to your actual hairline. And you can just have like the perfect prim proper, you know, drag queen hairline and no one's all the wiser. Like, that's so smart. But alas, I do not have long hair to pull that off. So we're doing this on a lace front wig today. <laughs> so I'm just going to brush through her and we're going to start the style of creating a base for this topper wig. Now, let's just separate the front section of the hair. Now, I did a ponytail like this years ago on the channel, but we're going to try our best to do this and do it so that it looks similar to how she had it on season 10 as if we're growing out of our head and we're just giving it a little augmentation to really show it off. So let's just pull this away. I'm still not over it. Like that is so smart. Like Yuhua, oh my goodness. When I discovered she was on the show, I was so excited because we all knew her as like this fierce seamstress in New York. Like she was making so many costumes for so many girls. And I remember on season 10, when we were all like lined up in that big X, like they had all of us back to do that. I remember that <laughs> Bob, her face cracked when she saw Yuhua because she realized she's not gonna be around to make her costumes anymore. <laughs> like Bob literally shouted out like, 
what? She makes all my costumes. And I remember, I think it was Morgan that just piped up and said, not anymore. <laughs> and that was such a New York heavy season. It was so surreal to see like how all the New York girls that were like surrounding the ex with me, like reacted. Because I think like Bob and Peppermint was there for a short period of time. Like a couple of girls from New York were there and they're all just seeing all these girls pop up, like one after the other. Like you who was the first one, I believe, Cracker and Monet, like so many girls. <laughs> and like, that was a fun season. Cause like being there amongst the alumni and like you could see their friends, like reacting to their friends being on, like all the LA girls went up for when Mayhem Miller came out and was finally on. And for me, it was like super sentimental to like be there and like witness this happening in real time with like a bunch of my sisters from Drag Race. I also got to see Trixie for who I hadn't seen so long. Cause I was still living in Milwaukee at that time. I was just in LA because I was doing like a California tour because it was winter time in Milwaukee and I wanted to escape it. So yeah, that was my escaping the winter tour because it's cold as hell. As luck would have it, they asked me to come do that episode. They asked me and I said, sure, why not? Let's do it. <laughs> I'm not gonna say no. Come on now. Put a little bassy bass in here, little bass tees. That was such a cool day and so surreal because like it was my first time going back to like a drag race filming capacity and not being like on the show, like being able to see a little bit how like it's all made. And I got like the barest minimum of what we were able to see. But like they did like a little, they had a little crew there filming us and interviewing us. It was so cool. And like they were keeping us sequestered as much as they could <laughs> to make sure none of the girls knew that we were there. And like meeting so many girls I had never met before. Like I met Chad Michaels for the first time. Lots of girls like Adore Delano, Laganja Estranja. I met Darian Lake for the first time there. Delta work, girl, there were so many people there. And like for me, that was episode super sentimental because like the first time you like truly feel like one of the Rue girls, you know, when you're part of the alumni and one of those things, like going to like the finale episodes and stuff like that, you truly feel like you're like part of the family at that point. <laughs> now, I remember seeing Yuhua on the X-shaped runway when she was wearing this hair and like thinking like, what a wackadoodle she is. <laughs> like, she was so kooky. Just from like the little bit, like brief, like, you know, dance off moment she had to give us. It's like, all the choices she was making is like, this girl is insane and I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited to see what she does this season. And as we all know, she would go on to become a queen of YouTube, like killing it with bootleg opinions. Like, I don't know how she has it in her to do it so much, like girl. <laughs> every single season she covers. All right, now I'm gonna keep teasing this and I'll be <laughs> right back. All right, welcome back. Now I started doing a little bit of the hairline on the other side. Let's make a rooted hairline around the sides here because it was growing out of her actual head, but I don't have that luxury. So we're gonna make a phony baloney hairline in the back right now. Y'all already seen me do this before. It's literally the same process as how I root a hairline on a hard front wig for the front of a wig. Just, you know, in the back of the head. <laughs> So we're literally just teasing it down and combining it together and then creating a hairline. Super simp, super simple. And if you want to know more about rooted hairlines or the drag queen hairline, check out my dedicated video I have to it. I'll link it down below. Pull that back and start pulling hair down. Now this all could be avoided if I just grew my hair out long, <laughs> but I simply don't have the patience nor the hairline anymore to pull that off. <laughs> I'd have to start filling it in with a lace front. Baby, I would truly have to fill in the gaps for that. But she's starting to come together, a little rooted hairline moment. So let's spray her and we'll clean her up later. But for the most part, I gotta start forming our ponytail and making the base. So let's just start cleaning that up. Ah, okay. Again, truly nothing has changed. I always just like take it off and just do it in my lap. It's literally what I've been doing a lot. <laughs> Sometimes the simplest and, you know, most intuitive thing is the thing you're supposed to do. Now I adore Yuha. Honestly, like last time I was at DragCon, I actually hung out with her and we had dinner together, me, her and Ernie, and she's always a blast. And that was the infamous DragCon where like her booth, like didn't it get, like everything gets stolen out of it like the day before. I think so. Yeah, it was like a huge like tragedy, but she was making the most out of it. And like, she was trying to find the comedy and everything. And to this day, we still haven't found out who it was. Although I'm inclined to believe it might have been Kamora Hall. They were across from each other. Just saying. She was late quite often. And I never got to see the inside of her hotel room. 
So there could be like tons of bootleg opinion merch and that backdrop in there for all we know. If I was messy, I'd live call her on, on this channel right now, but I won't do that. I feel like I'm like doing cheerleader hair or something or like hair for my little sister. <laughs> Just hold still. Let's get a black hair tie. Matchy matchy. It's always good to match. All right, little temporary tie. Now let's combine our hairline. Once I put that all together and like cut around the hairline, it's gonna be sickening. It's gonna look like it's growing out of her head. And you're all gonna be wondering, how did she do that? Now, I'm just gonna tie this up into a ponytail and I'll be right back and we'll start on our topper. So I'll be right back. <laughs> all right, welcome back. It's time to start doing our topper. Now I have the base wig all prepped right here. This is her, I did the hairline, cut it off camera. She looks fantastic, I have to say. I am so excited to wear her. So I'm gonna take your hard front wig. This is the Midnight Rockstar. I have quite a few of them, so I'm gonna sacrifice one today and make a topper with it. And fun fact, her sister, the uh, part of me in black was also used as a topper. For yes, I remember when Bob the Drag Queen's luggage got lost. She actually like needed last minute drag for her stand-up show. So I volunteered to make her a wig and Larry Edwards like drove her around and got her like her costume and everything. I think Naomi Smalls gave her nails. Every drag queen in Las Vegas that was there came together to like help Bob out. And I made her a wig last minute. I made her a base wig and I also made her a little topper out of a part of me black and I made it into a big bun, which is which is kind of what we're gonna be doing today. <laughs> I modeled it after like a wig I had seen Bob wear previously. So it's like just something simple that she could like swap it in and out with any wig she wanted with just a few pieces. And that was like right before I was about to go on All Stars. It was like, I was getting ready for it when that happened. I just like, took time out of my day and helped her because that's what you do, honey. Someone's in need, you help them. That's what sisters do. Now, Miss Yuha's run on season 10 was brief, but she had some iconic moments. I still quote her from that exercise video they had to make, like the Butterface Challenge. <laughs> All right, now we have that teased out the way we want it. Now, what I'm doing is gonna look crazy, but I wanna create like buildup in the hair so it has friction in it, so that when I start to mold it, it sticks together. Actually, it kind of reminds me of um, a story Fina Barbatal told me when I worked with her. She said that like she got to restyle like Amy Winehouse's actual hair and like they gave her some of like the jumbo braid that she used to like mash up and tease up and put underneath her hair. Like that big old beehive she wore was actually like jumbo braid that she would just purchase, you know, like the $2 stuff. And she just like mash it up and tease it up and like she put it underneath her hair to create that gigantic beehive. Like there's so many different cheats that girls used to do. And like that was called a rat back in the day. They used to actually sell pack hair like that where you can like rat it up and create like beehives or switches and stuff with it. I've actually done that today. The switch we're gonna use in place of Yuhua's braid is jumbo braid that I braided up and made into a switch. This is an old school drag trick that comes from the 60s. Like they used to actually sell these and they have like a little plastic piece right here to like solid it up. And you would like put it around your hair. It's like, you know, move things around. It's a switch or a halo is what we're known as. But drag queens, especially pageant girls always used to wear those. There's an old, old video of Bitter Betty back showcasing how to do like those kind of hairstyles. Like they are in the bloodline of drag and classic drag hair. And toppers and base wigs and everything, that's all like a classic callback to like that old school camp kind of drag. Like the ponytail pullback with a topper and some kind of braid in between to like cover up the joint. It's such a classic drag hairstyle. It's been used time and time again. Like, I love it. Like some of the greatest queens have had that hair. I am going to finish teasing this up and combing around it. And then we should have our final result. So I will finish this off and I'll be right back with our final <laughs> results. Welcome back. This is the final result. And oh my God, I love it. Again, this is dialing to like a classic camp hairdo that I adore. Door. You uh, you had some really cute hair when you walked in. And of course she had beautiful accoutrements in her hair. I couldn't find anything to adorn mine with that like matched this dress because I don't really wear red a whole lot. I just kind of like found this dress in storage. She's like, oh, okay, we'll wear this because she was wearing red. Yes, I adore it. Thank you so much, Yuha, for contributing to the video. I appreciate you so much. And I promise I'll do bootleg opinions sometime in the near future. Maybe, probably, we'll see. Anyways. I'd like to take a moment, a Venmo, or I think everyone has tipped me on, Venmo, I would like to thank. 
Daniel, thank you so much, Daniel. Arya, thank you so much, Arya. Janine, Patrick and david i also have some youtube super thanks from scott thank you scott abby roger brown sugar as well as a paypal emoji from katrina klein thank you sweetheart thank you all so much for the tips i appreciate you guys so much now if you enjoyed this rue girl hair recreation this hair story james's version now if there's a rue girl's hair you want to see me recreate be sure and leave her name down below i know there's a certain one y'all been asking for and trust me it's coming i just got to get the supplies for it okay now don't forget to like comment and subscribe and until next time bye now hit the outro Quick here as we recreate Maddie Morvis' hair from the pit stop. Or as we try out Trixie Cosmetics eyeliners. Come on, click it. You know you want to. If you don't click it, I'll poke you in the eye with eyeliner. So click it. It's going for a